Hey, Steve Zook, welcome back to Pogue Suit Channel and the Guitar Letter System. Hey, I showed this guitar, I think, yesterday. It just sounds incredible. I put some acoustic strings on it. This one just rings out. You got to understand, folks, every guitar is a little bit different. Even Chet Atkins said that. And every, every guitar, even the same brand and the same model are a little bit different. And uh, this, this is one of the top one or two uh, 650s, LH650, the Lores I've ever had. I've sold a lot of Lores. I've been with the company longer than anybody. I really know them well. And I'm probably one of the only companies that actually orders them up front and has them in stock and plays them and gets to know them. But it's always kind of hard to show flame in pictures. Um, but this one has kind of a cool, a cool, you know, kind of a little bit thinner flame, but really beautiful. But this guitar just really pops. It really has a tone. I thought I'd just share something simple here. Um, just because, you know, chordal work is really the key to tremendous growth on guitar. And if every day you just, you know, work on chordal improvisation and every, you know, couple weeks or two or three weeks you get some new material, like what I do in the guitar letter system, I, I do not send all 240 studies at once. I do a little bit of a time chart and video for each one. But if you work, uh, I, I integrate the 10 different systems of improvisation into my studies. Let me just show this real little trick I found this morning. Not really a trick, just nice chord connection. Major 9-6 chord with a 7 on the top to this chord. Okay, now if you look at this chord in C, it's got a flat 13, it's got the flat 7, so it's a dominant chord. Um, and it also has, you know, you see every chord has a couple different names depending on what your reference point is, okay? So here it's got the it's got the D sharp, so that kind of that kind of hints at a uh, you know a sharp nine. But it's the sound of the chord that is most important. See if I do that like this and, and look at the name of the chord from this A string, then I got a root, a flat five, a regular seven, a three, and a flat thirteen. It it, it really is more. When I studied with Joe Pass, he used to say that what's more, you know, the idea is more important than the definition. But anyway, this sounds really cool. Hear that? No. I could then maybe go to a major thirteen flat five to a major thirteen to a seven sharp five sharp nine thirteen nine. 13, 13, flat 9, that could resolve to the uh, dom, a major, major 7, 7 sharp 5, sharp 9, 13, another major 9, 6, with a, uh, another major 3rd on the top, and then resolve to the bi chord, okay, but see that, that's a nice little thing I just did this morning, now I'm adding this low note in here too, this low note. Flat five to major thirteen. Okay. I want to talk, but <clears throat> this guitar is incredible. It lists for around eighteen seventy nine or something like that. I sell it for twenty five percent off, which is map, which is thirteen ninety nine. I'll do this one for twelve ninety nine. I normally never sell them for less, but uh, I will on this one, just one time. Uh, I want to talk just a little bit, and don't overthink this because. If every day, one of the best things you can do is every day improvise a little bit. Every day imp improvise a little bit. And if you get stuck in your improvisation, that, that's why the guitar ladder is so important to give you that musical vocabulary so you can begin to hear tension and resolution and improvise on your guitar. Uh, this 650 just sounds so nice. Anyway, um, let me just go over a few of the systems. But every day you should improvise. You should just start playing on your guitar and don't stop for you know, two or three minutes and, and don't get all bummed if it doesn't sound perfect. But that's where the guitar ladder system studies are so helpful because you begin to learn how to use the 10 different systems of improvisation. But I don't get into a big left brain, you know, rap about it. It's integrated into the studies. But just to give you a couple of things to, to kind of think about when you're improvising, if all of a sudden you end up on a chord, you're not sure where to go. And again, it's really important, according to the science of neuroplasticity, not to be so results oriented. You've got to keep a positive attitude. So don't be too hard on yourself when you improvise. Like I said, improvise for two or three minutes every day, at least. But one, one, and again, I don't want to overthink this, and, I, and I'm not going to go into huge detail about this. So don't don't over process it. So one would be like, um, you know, chromatic, right? <laughs> 
And great improvisation and compositions are uh, a result of several different systems of improvisation. Like if you look at my improvisation on the LH350 on the home page of my Poksu channel with the guy surfing, you can hear that one. And actually Jamie Glasser, who toured with Chick Corea, called me up and told me he loved that. It's a true story. So anyway, well, let me just talk about a couple. So chromatic, moving, you know, half steps, right? Okay, intervallic, moving in intervals, like if I do perfect force with major seven. Okay. That's one of my guitar ladder studies uh, has this in it. Okay, that's why it's so, okay, so that's, that would be intervallic. And again, once you begin to get these deep into your head, you don't think that way. But when you're when you're starting off and you're improvising, and you're building your musical vocabulary, if you're improvising and you end up on a chord and you get stuck, well, maybe you can think of some of these options. Uh, of course, diatonic, which is only one little, really small piece of, of the puzzle, unless you're Bach, um, to like one, six, two, five, right? And then I might go. Uh, I might do an inversion of the G. I might add a flat five sub in there. So as opposed to going to uh, to the six, right in G, I go to the flat five of six. So and then can maybe come down chromatic, or I could go to the flat five of six and then two five, right? Okay. Um, Polychords is another another improvisational technique. So that's just going a scale tone third up each note of, of the chord. This is, if we look at this chord in G, so now what's really cool is play this chord and record it, and then play these notes over it to hear that harmony. That would be polychords. I mean, this is just a quickie, just a short, you know, not, but there's no reason really to overcomplicate this. Um, there's there's also like a symmetric where you kind of repeat an idea in another, another position. And, uh, but the most important thing is, is to work on musical studies. That's why the guitar ladder system is so important because I actually show you you know, uh, there's 240 studies that all incorporate all these different systems of improvisation in a very musical way. Like if I just do the beginning of cycle eight. See, that's musical sounding, you know? So yeah, this, you know, for $199, it's thousands of dollars of information. You can order at steves at guitars.com. It really works, folks. I've got 40 years into it. But yeah, I just woke up this morning. I, I can barely put this guitar down. It hasn't really been played that much. It's even going to sound better. But yeah, major 9-6 chord, and then it's got the, the, the B on the top. So uh, C, you know, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's got like another 6 on the top, or if you want to call it a 13, or a major 3rd on the top. Anyway, um, so we have this chord. See, that's musical. I could then go to a 13. 13 to a 13 flat 9. I know we gotta push a little harder. I'm not I'm not really woken up much yet here. Major 9 6 with a 7 on the top. Dominant chord, flat 13, 13, 13, 13 flat 9, major 7. And just in case you can't hear that, I sometimes my camera angle. So again, that was major 9 6 chord with a, a seven on the top, or you know, depending on how you want to look at it. Uh, yeah, because this is a nine six chord, and then I've got the, the B on the top, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, actually be a seven, yeah, seven on the top. Okay, so what happens eventually, folks, is you think in terms of color, you think in terms of sound, you think in terms of musical sentences, and, and your, your information becomes more subconscious and you feed your musical ear and then you start hearing ideas and being able to find them and being able to find your own har harmonic you know point of view and and uh, the different studies help you begin to learn about I just came up with this term a couple of days ago harmonic magnetism I like that you know that every every chord has a direction has multiple directions and chords fit together in ways that create musical you know sentences so this is major 9 6 with a 7 on the top to uh, 
dominant flat 13 sharp 9 to 13 to 13 to 13 flat 9 to either a bi chord or that could resolve to uh, the major 7 okay so seven we can then take that to a seven sharp five sharp nine thirteen another major seven with another major uh, nine six with a seven on the top resolve to polychord okay but yeah this guitar just sounds so nice anyway so uh Major 9, 6 with 7 on top, dominant chord flat 13, sharp 9. You could at that point come up to a major 13. This guitar was set up with 12s, now I have 11, so I might need to come up a little higher to concert pitch or just raise the bridge, but it's fine. I love the major, uh, major 13 uh, flat 5 chord. that can resolve to 7 sharp 5 sharp. So I'm going to make this a short one. But yeah, this guitar is available. Really has a sound. On this one, the, the neck is mahogany, which some people feel gives it more warmth, but then you also get the nice mid-range bloom, uh, mid-bass and mid-range and, and treble pop from the from the maple back. I know it's kind of hard to see that maple back. It's not huge. It's kind of a little bit smaller pieces of flame, but it really has a sound and really looks cool. But yeah, this, this, this is one of the best 650s I think I've ever had. It just really, really has a sound, and, I, and they, they are different. Even Chet Atkins said every guitar is a little bit different, you know. All right, folks, I'm, my hands are still waking up. But yeah, this thing really has a sound. All right, take care. And uh, if you're interested, you can call or text 714-548-0385 or email stevezook, the number seven, at yahoo.com. That's not seven spelled out, just stevezook7 at yahoo.com. Thanks. All right, talk to you soon. Bye-bye.